Hey, how's everybody doing this evening? With the news that Twin Motion is soon going to be going free for everybody, I thought this would be a really good time to take a look at the things that I really wish I'd known about Twin Motion when I first started using it. Now, these aren't the most complicated tips, but they are definitely the things that I really, really wish that I'd known about when I first started doing professional work with Twin Motion. So, I've got about 10 tips in about 10 minutes. And hopefully for absolute new beginners to Twin Motion, these will be really, really useful and avoid a little bit of the early adoption stress. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. The very first thing that I really wish I had known about and had done at the start is really simple. It's turning on autosave. Now, a lot of my students have recently been doing twin motion work over the last year, almost exclusively. And autosave has very much saved the day quite a number of times for a lot of students. All right, how do we turn it on? Well, we go up to edit or do control P and open up preferences. And you can see we've got our settings bar here. Now, you can see we've got settings, quality and appearance. What is really important is to scroll on down just a little bit to where it says save, turn this on and make sure that auto save is turned on. Now this is not on by default as far as I know, but it really, really should be. I've had students lose projects or get projects overwritten or corrupted or really just kind of go a little bit haywire almost before they were actually due. Now these thankfully were student projects, but they could be your professional work. So turn on auto save. All right. Top of the song, and also adjust the intervals. If you're really worried about a project, I would recommend doing every five minutes. It's really great. And the more important thing though, is you can do the number. You can actually adjust the number of auto saves. Now, in my experience, I think I used to use three and I think my students have it set to three, but if you're doing this for money and taking the work really seriously and you can't risk a catastrophic file failure, let's put that number to 10 and maybe set the interval to about every five minutes. It'll be frustrating to have your scene pause, but I promise you it's absolutely worth it. This is about performance. You can see I've got a pretty dense scene going on here. It's really, really dense. In fact, I'm getting, if we turn on the stats panel on the bottom left of the screen here, I'm getting, oh, that's really terrible between 10 and 13 frames per second. Now, this is just not a viable frame rate. And if I kind of move the camera forward, you can see this is just gonna really eat up quite a lot. It's using 99% of my GPU, which is kind of a mid-range last generation GPU. Ooh, this is not great though. One way we can adjust this, and again, these are things I wish that I'd known about earlier on, Control P, and let's go to the quality tab. Now, you can see, I have this set to ultra, and this is where a lot of the performance hit is coming. I'm asking really twin motion to show off everything, shadows, effects, textures, anti-aliasing. They're all set to the maximum range. Simple trick to do this, just drop things down to high and we can click OK. Now, when we do this, you can see my frames per second have shot up to about 25. Again, not great, still using all of the GPU, but overall, the performance is a lot, lot smoother. Now, a couple of other things we can also do. Control P and go back to the quality. We can also adjust the viewport resolution scaling. So for example, we could drop this down to 70, drop the resolution for the path tracer down as well and click OK. Now, I believe these do need to be, you need to restart to in motion for these to actually take effect. And what they'll do is effectively render what you're seeing on the screen at a lower resolution and use an upscaling algorithm to kind of fill in the gaps. I've had a little bit of mixed results on this and um, probably would just drop the viewport resolution first. Here we've got a room and this is the project we'll use for the rest of the examples. And over in Twin Motion, you can see here it is. Now, I want to just take a look at the walls here and you can kind of see by default how a material is projected onto a surface is set to from object UVs. Now, if you're coming from SketchUp, you probably don't have UV coordinates assigned. So let's take a look at what happens. I'm gonna drag out this, uh, just a standard basic wood material onto this wall. 
Yeah. yeah, and you can kind of see what's going on. You can kind of see if I zoom in. Yeah, it it is there, but it's it's not right. And this figuring this out for me when I first started using Twin Motion took way too long, and it was just a source of unending frustration. Um, and I could not figure out what was going on. It's really simple though. The material is set to from object UV. You can see it up here at the top, not cubic UVs. So by changing it to cubic and I drag out again to set different mode material, and there we go. It is projecting in the right fashion or the correct way. Uh, yeah, that just 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 caused so much frustration the first time I did this. Could not figure that out, and I really really hope that single thing helps a lot of you out. When in doubt, change the projection type to cubic, and your materials should look a lot better. Now, do I wish Twinmotion had a triplanar projection method? Yeah, kind of really, really do. But until then, from cubic UVs, it will save you a lot of problems. So the next tip is to check whether a material is set to two-sided or not. If I use the eyedropper on this object right here, which is the keyboard, and I scroll all the way, all the way, all the way down, you can see under miscellaneous, this is set to two-sided. If I click on this decorative object here on the left, you can see two-sided off, two-sided on. By default, my understanding is that if you're coming from SketchUp in particular, Twin Motion does not automatically make materials two-sided, and this can result in some very interesting properties. You can see that right here, no floor, floor. If I use this and again, set this to two-sided, there we go. Uh, again, these are just things that I really, really wish I'd know when I first started working in Twin Motion, and I think things that just new Twin Motion users, especially SketchUp to Twin Motion, you're just going to have to kind of learn these quirks. But there you go. The next thing I want to talk about is the actual assigning materials to objects in Twin Motion. Now, by default, when you actually drag a material out, for example, I'm putting this red on the back wall here you can see it is being assigned based on this at the top where it says replace material. Now, 90% of the time, this will be absolutely fine. You do, in fact, want to replace the default material. However, sometimes you'll find yourself in a situation where, for whatever reason, when you go to replace one material, it'll actually replace maybe the material on another object as well, and it can be really sort of frustrating. What's important here is this button, replace material, apply to object or apply to selection. So if you're having a hard time, for example, you're changing the brass on maybe this light up here, and maybe it's also actually affecting the brass on this object here as well. Well, what we can do is really just select the object we want exclusively, change how the material is being assigned, apply to selection, and we can drag out something new on there. And we don't then have to worry that it is maybe going to change some other element in another piece of your scene. It's just such a small thing, but it can be really an, a source of a lot of frustration for new Twin Motion users, because sometimes the only alternative fix is to go back to SketchUp and assign a different material or color or effectively material ID to it and resync again. But this way, you have control over which objects get which materials. Okay, buddy. Just looking outside of our scene here, and you can see we've got the default Twin Motion Horizon, which for some reason is a sand dune. Don't really know why. There you go. Now, one thing to note about this, you are not stuck with the default horizon line. And in fact, if you look on the right here, the horizon object is selectable, and you can actually just delete the starting landscape or turn off the visibility. I'm going to hit delete, but I'm also going to move myself out of the way. And if we click on the Ambience tab and scroll all the way down to Horizon, you can click on and enable your own specific Horizon type. Now, there's not many options. We've got a few different ones here. And 90% of the time, you're probably going to be using Countryside or this City Horizon. And that's it. It's a small thing, but it's really handy because really, when it comes to Architectural Render, really just got to make sure you do not see that Horizon line. Or if you do see the Horizon, that there should be something on it. And it's a small little thing, but again, I wish I had known this 
when I first started working into emotion. The next thing we want to talk about is access to the Quixel Mega Scans library within Twin Motion. Now, if you're just starting out in Twin Motion, you might not realize this, but if you've set up an account and you're signed in while using Twin Motion, which you probably will be, you may not realize that you have access to the Quixel Mega Scans library within Twin Motion. And this is especially true for new people starting out. Now, the Mega Scans are going to be right here, and you can see, so again, library, Mega Scans. And you might be a little bit confused by this because you might be thinking materials, but it's actually surfaces. So we click on surfaces. You can see now we've got a ton of options. You can also take a look at the Quixel Mega Scans library online. They've got a really nice website where you can see all the materials and objects in very high resolution photographs and renders. So it's really, really great. But this gives you basically thousands of extra materials. You're not limited to just the ones under the materials tab. Mega scans, surfaces, and for example, wood. And you can see here for this scene, we're gonna look for plank, and I'm just going to download these, maybe these painted wooden planks, and I'll actually just assign them to our floor. Awesome, that looks pretty good. Now, if we go down to populate here, and I wanna move myself a little bit out of the way. You can see we've got some options for foliage, paths, and urban. More specifically, we're talking about scattering foliage. So what we've done is we've changed the ground plane to a mega scans material, or actually no, uh, to this is grassy ground material. And I'm going to go over to library, vegetation, and trees. Now, by default, we'd, we'd probably think about just dragging trees out and placing them by hand and hoping that we get a pretty good result that lines up. A faster way to do this is to go populate and I'm going to pick foliage and I've got two options, paint or scatter. Now I'm going to do paint and what we do is we just drag out the models that we actually want into our scene. So I'm going to do just a mixture of turkey oak and Norway spruce and then we just left click and just paint these in. We can adjust the diameter of our brush so we can get more. And we can also click on individual uh, trees, for example, the spruce, and massively dial up the density. We can also adjust the age and the height and the season as well. So you can kind of really change the look and feel of your trees. Now, tied to this is also the ability to scatter. And for this, we can just place, I'm going to use weeping willows, drag this in, and I'm going to click on it. And now you can see the scatter tool has opened up and now I can just left click and assign. Now, just be mindful, you can see what that kind of did there. It's scattered all over the ground plane. But either way, either of these tools are a great way to add foliage quickly. And they're especially useful if you're using them with the grass. So you can see, same technique, just drag these, whatever grass type you want out, maybe a mixed bag, add some weeds, add some dandelions and either paint them in or scatter them in. This will stop your, really the, the vegetation looking like it's been placed by hand and give it a more organic feel. Two last things I want to mention. The first is just sorting your tools and objects with containers. You can see up on the right, I have my scene tree with all of my goodies in this. This is all the objects and everything. What's really, really cool about this is you can use this little drop down menu to sort by type and a uh, really handy thing that would have made my scene management a lot easier early on. I can use the drop down here. I can pick objects, furniture, people, and for example, paths. Uh, I can also just sort by vegetation, which is really, really, really important here especially if I want to move all of my trees. So I'm going to click on vegetation and you can see now what it's done is really just kind of isolate all of my trees. I'm going to just scroll down. I'm going to left click on the top, hold down shift, select the bottom and I've selected all of these and now I can move them all. I can also put this back to all. They will remain selected. I'm just going to right click and I'm going to move to new container and I'll call this trees. Uh, Caps lock is obviously on, whoops. And you can see now I can toggle these on and off. Really, really handy stuff for scene organization. OK, 
Okay, buddy. The last point I want to make on, you know, things that I wish I'd known when I first started Twin Motion, probably just how to deselect things. Now, one issue with Twin Motion is they don't inherently make it sort of understandable how to just deselect things. Uh, it's kind of an odd one. So uh, oftentimes I'll see new people just to try and deselect them. They'll just like click on something else or try and click on something full stop just to try and deselect. This is also true, for example, if we go to the ambience and say I want to adjust maybe the camera and I want to type in, let's just say I do 50 and I hit enter and or yeah, uh, you know, there we go, 50. And um, it's sort of like you just like click off of stuff. Well, honestly, the fastest way to kind of do this is just type in whatever value or select whatever object you want. In this case, I'll type in 35 again and just right click your mouse. In fact, this is true for anything. I've got an object selected, right click your mouse, got a pillow selected, right click your mouse. It's a really simple thing and I, I kind of really wish that Twin Motion would just be like, hey, yeah, this is how you deselect things. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really, really do appreciate it. And, um, really do appreciate uh, all the people who've taken time to comment or like or any of those things. Uh, hopefully you found this sort of video useful. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.